Good morning, Cecile. Great to see you. How are you? Things are well. We are finding our way here. Good morning, Yvette and John. How are you? Good to see everybody. Welcome, welcome. Jamie Battles, everybody. Hey, hey. Cindy, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Ahoy! Good morning. Michelle, how are you? Great to see you. So glad you're here. I hope you're well. I hope it's a beautiful day up there. And uh, things are feeling good. Good morning. Good morning. Hope all is well. We're doing all right. Yes, yes, things are doing all right. We are uh, getting very excited to be worshiping on Sunday. So I've been hard at that, uh, getting things together and preparing our space and preparing uh, the service. Uh, so we've got a lot more work to do still to do, but we're, we're, we're working on it. Matthew, good morning. Great to see you this morning. I hope you are well. How is everybody? Hello, friends. Gorgeous day in Maine. Ah, oh, that's great to hear. So glad. Good morning. Hope all is well with you. Yes, I hope you too. You too, Cecile. I hope things are well. Yes, it is beautiful here as well. Uh, it is this. It, you can you can feel a little bit here and there that uh, there is this preparation for a uh, a holiday weekend, which is kind of nice, even though there's you know it's very different for sure. It's very different. Uh, but there's still this little this little edge of buzz around. Uh, um, it seems like uh, Memorial Day has just been swallowed up in all of this. But but I can still feel a little bit around the edges, which is nice. Good morning, Vicky. How are you? Glad you're here this morning. Good morning, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, see a few more people finding their way in. Good morning, Deb Votrin. Hello, friends. So good to see everybody. So, so, so good. You are you're driving so you won't be your usual chatty self. Mm, we'll see. So, so, so glad you're here. Oh, no. You spent your night at the hospital with your friend Anna. She's all right. But going to bed after this. Good choice. Oh, I'm glad you were there for her. That is a gift. So, uh, yeah, take care of yourself. That is all what this time is about for sure that uh that we might uh, journey with others and we might care for them and might care for ourselves a little bit too that's for sure so i hope you do that good morning maggie Pereira. hello Pereira clan i hope you're doing great but, uh good morning gail uh hope you're doing well hope you're doing well everybody see everybody coming in Good morning. So glad you're here, everyone. It is welcome to another 11.11. It is Friday, TGIF. It is Friday, the 22nd day of May. Uh, I am so glad that each one of you are here. Uh, as I have continued to say, Kim Luce is in the house, everybody. Uh, Kim is a great warrior. So glad you're here. I served in the Army with Kim. She is a terrific uh, and just got her yoga certification, everybody. So very exciting. So good morning, Priscilla. I hope you are well. Good morning, Gail. That uh, so. Hey, good morning, Linda. I just saw you snuck in there under the under the wire. So glad everybody's here. Cool. Absolutely. Good morning, Sandra. Glad you're here. Uh, it is always an encouragement to me to see your digital little faces shine up at me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on this journey. Thank you for coming and being part of this 1111 on this Friday and uh, having shared this journey together with, uh, with, with all of us as we continue to walk through this uh, 
you know, bizarre and heavy and weird and happy and joyful and terrifying and scary and all of the things, this entire human experience. It is, it is as it, as life is just more so. So, uh, so thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to start with this little piece from, uh, the Paul's book to the church in Galatia. So it, uh, so there is this, uh, um, that uh, he's sending this, this, uh, so now the church in Galatia is a bunch of Celts. Now we think about Celts and we think about like people who painted themselves blue and a bunch of Scots and, and Irishmen and all that sort of stuff. But that's not really true. The Celtic world went all the way from, uh, from Ireland to Turkey. And so somewhere up in the northern part of Turkey is where the where Galatia was, and that he's sending this letter to the church in Galatia. So understand, the Celts have a whole different way of looking at the world, that, that Christianity is as much influenced by the Greeks and by the, by the Hebrews as it is by the Celts, and that, that when, the, when the church goes north of the Alps, Radical things happen because they they just see the world in a different way, and it's a, and it's a good thing. It's awesome. It's ex, it's exciting that the church and the and the world might uh, might be informed. You know, um, uh, I I can't remember the scholar right now, but he 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 says it this way. He says that every, wherever Christianity encounters a new culture, it deepens and widens the experience of the truth in that culture when when Jesus enters in. And that's not to say Jesus wasn't there before. Clearly, God is God is with all peoples. But it is when but as as the knowledge comes to the to, to these different cultures, that it deepens and widens the understanding of the cosmos, of the understanding of the world, of the understanding of and and the personal understanding of our own journeys, of our own, uh, of our own difficulties, of our own struggles, of what it is to have had God in our midst, to be as we are, to be as as we have been, to know our struggles, to know what it is to uh, to to be fully embodied as a human being, to know what what it is to have had. Uh, have had heartburn, to cry at a, a beautiful song, to be moved in love and life, to have your heart broken. That is the experience that God comes into the world to have. And that wherever that and wherever that grand truth of God in the world comes into expanding and encountering other cultures, it deepens and widens that experience. And so this is a this is the book this is the uh, to these bunch of Celts in Galatia, um, so who see the world differently. So hear hear what Paul is writing here because it's because it's a little different. So, so he writes this. He says, "You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command: love your neighbor as yourself." If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, that, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires that what is contrary to the Spirit, and what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you, will, you are not under the law. Oh, so good. So good, everybody. Raise your glass. Come on. It's so good. It's so good that uh, this notion that we are born to be, we are called to be free. Not just that we are born to be free, but hear that. We are called to be free, and we're called to use our freedom humbly for love. And, and, that, and that in that, that and we are called to walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. And that's what I really want to talk about today, of what this means, what we're talking about when we talk about walking by the Spirit in these days. Good morning. Good morning, Doris. Good morning, Andrew. Oh, Andrew's here, everybody. 
three claps for Andrew. Uh, if you don't know Andrew Braves, uh, you should look him up and, and follow him and uh, and help his ministry. Uh, he is a uh, intrepid and incredibly called uh, minister to uh, to the people uh, to the people of China, and he's just got he uh, he and his family have have uh, have have just returned from China a while a few months ago, and has been uh, um, his uh, you know he's, he's an amazing guy. Uh, look him up, follow him. Anyway, all right. To the other side, I, I, but th- this letter could not be more perfect because you talk about a, a less free people than the than the people of China. There isn't one. They are the, they're by far. The, you think we're enslaved? The people in China are living in slavery, friends. They are, and that and that what we come to in this age is that is that we are called. Hear this word of of, of Paul. We are called to be free. We're called to be free. We're called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. What is he saying? He's saying when we talk about reserving the flesh. Now, we think that's like eating all the donuts and having all the drinks and, and you, know, do, you, know, uh, you know, doing all the things that our lustful bodies would want to do, like all that sort of stuff. It's not. I, I don't think that's what he's talking about at all. Like that. That there. That was certainly a a uh, a piece of it. But but really, this whole the whole morality code thing. That's that's only a, that's only a slight piece. We, you know, we'll all have to contend with our appetites at some point. But but I think this deeper sense is the sense of what it is to. Because where does he start? He says, "You are called to be free." Well, what does freedom mean? It means it means that we're called to step into responsibility for our lives because we who are truly free we 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 are called to to own our sphere and to 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 own it to own all the things that we can control as best as we can control them and then and in that submit all the rest to the spirit submit all the rest to the spirit how much during this time have we been enslaved to the thoughts of what might happen in the future, to the worries about what happened in the past, and to the worries about, you know, if you've been standing online in this in this culture and you've seen somebody walking around without a mask and like, was there a little piece of fear in you? Was there like, was there a little, that's the flesh, friends. That's the, that's like that, that lizard brain that lives in the back of your head that just wants to do nothing but survive to the next breath. Its whole function in life is just to get you to its next breath. Well, friends, there are more important things in this life than just your next breath. And trust me, one day you will forfeit even that, that the lizard brain is always a loser. This piece of stuff that's back there. I mean, it's got a good function. It keeps us going. It warns us about things. But when, but this whole notion of you are called to be free is that you're called to, sub, to put that lizard brain in the back seat so that we might love, so that we might be agents of love in this world, so that we might not know fear. You know, I, I don't know a lot of Andrew's story, but I know he was a pastor and that he was, and that he and his wife, this, this is, uh, Matt McDonald shared me this, uh, his, uh, this bit of his story, that he and his wife uh, both woke up one morning uh, and, and they both kind of had the same dream. And that dream was that they were called to ministry in China. And that from that point, they, had, they, they began to move in the direction of the call of that ministry. Now, if they had st- stayed there and saw, thought from that lizard brain moment, that little, that little, uh, that little uh, uh, piece, of, piece of brain stem in the back of their head that every, that every uh, lizard has, if they'd, if they'd been operated from that place, that place, that's the place of the flesh, friends. That's the place of the flesh. It's not, you know, you, we, read that, we read Paul's things and we think that it's all about like appetites and stuff like that. It's not that. When we're called to be free, we're called to be free. Andrew, I will bet you, is one of the most freest guys I know in this world because he's walking out this call. He's walking out this world, this this uh, this place. Paul was going into the world of the Celts, an entirely foreign world to the Greek and the and the and the Hebrew world that he knew. They had a whole different way of th- of doing things, a way that was really nailed down. And what is it? What it was his word for them? You're called to be free, free from indulging the flesh. And again, don't hear it like, oh, you know, all the thing, you know, like eating the whole tray of brownies. I mean, that is one thing, but that is a that's a real that that's a that's a, uh, a that, that's a base base understanding of what he's saying. He's saying that lizard brain place, 
that would have you dwell in fear rather than the place that would have you dwell in service. That heart that calls you to love yourself and to love your neighbor. To love yourself and to love your neighbor in such a way that, yeah, you'll probably take some bites for it. That, but it, but even in the but that uh, but that prevents you and calls you out of this this bite and devouring of culture. I mean, we are watching. Like, if you if you're online on, at all right now, if you're watching things social media, we are watching people devour each other on social media by what they're doing or they're not doing, and the way that they're behaving or not behaving, or whether you're you're doing these things or you're not doing those things. Friends, you're called to be free. You're called to be free. Be free. Know the freedom that all that 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 part of your brain that wants to just keep the ox, you know, the the oxygen coming in and the carbon dioxide going out, is not the thing that should have the steering wheel. But but let Christ Jesus the one who called you into being, the one who has walked in front of you in the path, the one, who, the one who knows you and the one who illuminates your way, walk in that way and you will know freedom and you will know love and you will know joy in these days. Well, that's my hope for you today. And so I, I want to, uh, so I, I, and I, so by that, I, I want to remind everyone that, uh, and, and, and I have an ask for you today. First, to, to remind you that uh, we are going to begin resume uh, uh, worshiping uh, in person um, on this, this Sunday. Uh, we will continue our Facebook Live presence, so please don't, if you, if you feel compromised and you feel like you can't be here or, or you're not quite ready or whatever, any, anything in there, please know that, uh, that our Facebook Live presence will be there and be there for you uh, just as it has been over these past weeks. So, so don't despair. Uh, but where two or three are gathered, there too is Jesus. And we're called, we're, we're called to gather. A fire can't burn without embers that come together, without sticks that come together, without fuel that gathers together, and then it holds the fire. We're going to come and we're going to hold some fire this this Sunday. So I hope you'll come and gather. There are a number. They'll they'll be a, a, a in order to to begin to endeavor to keep everyone uh, um, uh, to prevent the the spread of virus and all that. There'll be uh, there'll be uh, some instructions on the, on the website. Uh, just be aware there'll be no Sunday school. Uh, that we're inviting families to come and worship together. There'll be uh, the, that that uh, um, you know we'll still have our presence here. Um, and that uh, we'll have the opportunity to 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 come and gather, and uh, so look for those instructions. And and uh, uh, the deacons have been doing a lot of work in preparing for how we're going to do all that. So uh, I hope you'll I hope you'll uh, you'll come and be a part of that. And the second thing is uh, spread the word. Let folks know that are a part of our communion. Let folks know that are a part of our world uh, that they might that uh, that uh, um, there's a place for us here that we can come and be free. We can come and be free. We don't have to be owned by the, by the dictates of culture. We don't have to be owned by the dictates of law. We don't have to be owned by the dictates of the, of the things of the world and the things of man, but we come to be set free in Christ Jesus. And so that is why we come to worship this Sunday and we keep coming to worship. So, uh, Andrew, I am so glad that you are here today. That is a, that is a, the Holy Spirit coming to be a part of this and part of this world. Hey, Robin Carden. Robin Carden's here as well. Uh, so I want to, uh, again, invite each one of you in these days ahead that is, you know, we're, we're not unlike Paul. We're going to, you know, this, this world and this culture that we find ourselves, I'm standing in line to get coffee this morning and everybody's wearing a mask and I'm like looking around and going, what, this is, this is, you know, I, I feel like I went over the Alps and I'm in Galatia somewhere. I'm in this foreign land that I don't I don't quite recognize its culture and I don't quite speak its language, but I know that I am not called to live out of that that uh, lizard brain place. But I am called to live in freedom. I'm called to live in love. I am called to live to love one another as I have been loved and in it. Know the goodness and the grace of the one who made me. I hope you'll step into that these days too, and that you'll know uh, more that's coming. Tomorrow there will be no uh, 
11 11 uh we're we're in prep mode for sunday and then monday is memorial day so that we know 11 11 we will pick up 11 11 on tuesday of next week okay tuesday next week that'll all there'll be facebook events to that effect as well uh come and worship with us on sunday uh whether it is through facebook live or whether it is uh is at our ministry and at our platform here uh, may and and it uh, and in these days uh, know that each one of you on this list uh, are in my prayers and are in my uh, my uh, uh, and and uh, I hold you up before the Most High uh, every day. Grace and peace, everyone, and uh, it is my uh, uh, it is my sincere hope that you will live in freedom, not that reacts to that, uh, that indulgence, but that serves one another in love. All right, friends, peace and grace to you all. Uh, we will, uh, I will see you, uh, if not in worship on Sunday, I will see you Tuesday. Blessings of peace and grace.